distances to all the devotees. Welcome to the third day of the series of sessions on Krishna's Nama, Rupa, Guna and Leela. The first day we discussed the word Krishna's Nama, the glories of the holy name of Krishna. The second day, yesterday, we discussed several characteristics of Krishna's enchanting activity form. Today we will meditate on a few qualities of the Lord. I am sorry, last two days I went way beyond time and we couldn't take even some questions. Today we try to exhibit some self control. Thank you, Ellie. Sutra Swami spoke this shloka in response to an inquiry made by Swamika Rishis. He asked, Sukadeva Goswami learned Srimad Bhagavatam from his father Vyasadeva. Why? Sukadeva Goswami is already a self-realized soul. Why did he take the trouble of studying Srimad Bhagavatam under the guidance of Vyasadeva? Vyasadeva compared Srimad Bhagavatam uh, as per the instruction of Narada Muni. <coughs> And he taught that Bhagavatam to Sukadeva Goswami. Why Sukadeva Goswami, a self-realized soul, had to take the trouble of studying Srimad Bhagavatam? Uh, why? Then Sukadeva Goswami answered this question. Atma Ramascha Munayo. Atma Ramascha Munayo.
satisfied in satisfying the self-satisfied. <laughs> they don't need anything beyond that process of serving the Supreme Lord for uh, their satisfaction. So, taking pleasure in satisfying Krishna, Samsiddha Haritoshnam is the highest personality. Uh, is, a person who takes pleasure in satisfying Lord Hari is the greatest transcendentalist. Atmarama, you can uh, describe multiple people as Atmaramas. Nanis also can be Atmaramas. A dumb person, dull person also can be Atmarama. Audhut can be Atmarama also. But real Atmarama is the Supreme Lord. He doesn't need anything beyond himself for his satisfaction. And his devotees are also called Atmarama because they are satisfied in Ahitki. One who is attracted to the qualities of the Lord and thus uh, become self-satisfied is, is the real Atma. Mm -hmm. So the focus of the Shloka is Krishna's qualities are so amazing. Mm -hmm. Krishna has 64 qualities, minimum. <laughs> 64 qualities as described in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Rupa Goswami. Mm -hmm. Now this shloka is very important, explained so elaborately by uh, many acharyas, especially Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave 61 explanations of this shloka to Sanatana Goswami, about 25 explanations to Prakashananda Saraswati, <laughs> and even Prabhupada elaborately, for about 10 pages he describes purport to this shloka. But the next shloka is also exciting to me. In fact, more exciting. <laughs> it is philosophically great, but next look at describes something which is very, very practical for us in our devotional service as Sadhakas. Sukadeva Goswami, although his Atma Rama, he still took pleasure in analyzing the qualities of Krishna and uh, he took pleasure in hearing the qualities of Krishna in Bhagavatam, Prabhupada Father. After hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, being attracted to Lord Hari's qualities, what happened to Sukadeva Goswami? That's discovered in the next shloka. Given by some point like Hare Gunakshita Matihim. Hare Gunakshita Matihim. Bhagavan Badarayanim. Bhagavan Badarayanim. Adhyagan Mahadakhyanam. Adhyagan Mahadakhyanam. Nityam Vishnu Janapriya. Nityam Vishnu Janapriya. Oh, you are from Andhra, I am from Andhra. 
Maharashtra, I'm from Maharashtra. Uh, you're from America, I'm from America. Uh, you like gulab jamun, I like gulab jamun. Uh, you, I like gulab jamun, you don't like gulab jamun. Whenever you get it, you'll give it. So, friendships can begin like this, initially. But, let them begin. <laughs> but that should not be the basis of friendship. Friendship based on bodily considerations are not sustainable for a long time. Friendships based on attraction towards Krishna's qualities are spiritual friendships they sustain for a long time. They are everlasting. So, in our interactions with other devotees, we should try to spiritualize our relationships. We should try to spiritualize our uh, interactions by inducing the culture of discussing about Krishna and not just discussing many other things. As a matter of you know, practical dealings, we may discuss a few things. Uh, just for functioning in this world, that's all good, amazing. But if we can induce Krishna Katha in our personal private conversations, that's a wonderful way of cultivating spiritual friendships. By, by taking prasadam, Adigadada to Marinapu, myself, three of us were discussing some qualities of Krishna. It was so nourishing, right? <laughs> so you're saying, sharing something from Ramayana uh, and Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam, Maharaj episode, Chitraki episode, Marichi. <laughs> so just a 10 minutes conversation that's so nourishing, so memorable, and that brings us closer to other devotees. When we become attracted to other devotees based on their attraction to Krishna, when they become attracted to us based on our attraction to Krishna, that attraction is spiritual attraction. All other attractions are like superficial or temporary. They are important and relevant to some degree, but the greatest uh, way of connecting with other devotees and developing spiritual friendships is Machitta, Madhgata Prana, Bodhayantaha Parasva. Paraspara Anukathanam Pavanam Bhagavati So when we meditate on the glories of Lord Hari, Pavanam Bhagavad Yashara, they are Bhagavad Yashara, they are the glories of Lord Krishna, Pavanam, they completely purify us. They, they enlighten us. So Sukadeva Goswami became Nityam Mushma Janapriyaha because Adhyagan Mahadakya, he studied Bhagavad and developed attraction towards Krishna's qualities. Rare Guna Akshakta Matihi. To the degree our minds are absorbed in meditating on Lord Hari's qualities, to that degree, Hari's devotees become attracted to us. My spiritual master, His Holiness, Radhana Swan has gave a definition of love of God. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. It's very nice. Very nice. Love of God means <laughs> loving God. Mm -hmm. Loving those who are loving God. Those who love God, pure devotees. Those who are trying to love God. Sadhaka Bhaktas and those whom God loves. Yeah. Every single day. <laughs> <laughs> right. Love God, love those who love God, love those who are trying to love God, love whom God loves. That is love of God. So, we will be able to see that spiritual connection between everything and everyone with Krishna when we love Krishna. Harer guna akshitta matihi, when we are captivated by the qualities of Lord Hari, then we will have that Krishna conscious vision, spiritual vision towards people in this world, towards events in this world, towards objects in this world. Otherwise, we only try to exploit material nature, exploit people around us and try to see them as how are they useful to me. For a selfish person, for a self-centric person, every interaction is a transaction. How is my interaction beneficial to me? I'm interacting with this person, is it beneficial to me? That's all selfish people think. But for selfless people, this person is a servant of Krishna, potentially. This servant is a lover of Krishna. This person is a lover of Krishna. This person is a part and parcel of Krishna, Amsha of Krishna. I should respect this person. So, we develop spiritual vision to the degree we love Krishna. And that love towards Krishna is based on attraction towards Krishna's qualities. Why do we love anybody if they don't have good qualities? Krishna is in a of hundreds and thousands of good qualities, therefore we love him. And he deserves our love, our love 
more than anyone else deserves. Because he loves us more than anyone else. Many people may not love us, but who loves us more than that person who stays right within our hearts? Even if the living being commits such abominable activities, sinful activities, and takes with his worm in stool also, Krishna wouldn't leave that person. He is so kind. Ishvara Sarva Bhutana Vrdeshi Arjuna Dishtati. He doesn't leave the person, he stays within the heart of that person. He loves us so much. Although we are not interested in his friendship, his relationship, he never leaves us. Mm-hmm. He is interested in our relationships. Relationship. By studying Bhagavatam, we understand Krishna's heart. By studying Bhagavad Gita, we understand Krishna's heart. Then we meditate on Krishna's qualities. The more we meditate on Krishna's qualities, the more we start loving everything connected to Krishna, everyone connected to Krishna. Thus, we treat everyone with kindness, with love, with affection, with compassion, despite all their defects. This is the quality of great compassionate people. Anugrahaye hacharanti monam bhutani bhavyani janardhanasi. So, our, our interactions with other people, our friendships and relationships with others, other devotees specifically, must be based on our attraction towards Krishna's qualities. That's why Harir Guna Akshita Madhi, by studying Bhagavatam, we need to immerse our minds in Krishna's qualities. That's the purpose of studying Bhagavatam, mm-hmm. not to become scholars, not to become philosophers. We may speak Bhagavatam, we may study Bhagavatam from a philosophical perspective, grammatical perspective, linguistic perspective, poetic perspective, historical perspective. But if you miss the devotional perspective, if you miss to at, get attracted to Krishna, Krishna's qualities genuinely and develop devotion towards Krishna, then we are missing the point. We, we, are, we are not taking full advantage of Bhagavatam study. Krishna, let's meditate on Krishna's qualities now. With this little prelude of importance and developing attraction towards Krishna's qualities, let's meditate on a few qualities of Krishna within whatever time we have. One quality of Krishna is his reciprocal nature. In fact, in Vrindavan we can understand by realizing Vrindavan past times. The highest quality of Krishna is to be captivated by his devotee's love. That is the topmost quality of Krishna. His kripa shakti, his, his attraction towards the love that devotees have for him and his being captivated by that selfless love is his topmost quality. Apart from that, he has many other qualities that are very much in connection with the condition of souls. They can connect with these qualities. But Krishna's highest quality is to be captivated by devotee's love. But conditioned souls don't have love. How will he be captivated by them? So, for conditioned souls are struggling sadhakas, <laughs> they need to meditate on Krishna's compassion and all those things and develop some attraction towards Krishna. And when their attraction becomes so much, then Krishna gets captivated by their love and that is the <coughs> most quality. All others are there. Like Krishna creates this world, maintains this world, he is very powerful, he has six opulences, so many things are there. But of all of them, Krishna's intention or mood of reciprocating with the intense love of his devotees is his topmost quality. Let me give you an example. In Vrindavan, Krishna sits right in the middle of several concentric circles. All the gopas make some concentric circles and Krishna sits right in the middle. He starts offering the food that he is eating. He would eat, it's tasty. He would take it from his mouth and offers it to Madhavangal or Subala, Sridama. They also eat something. They also feed Krishna directly into his mouth. <laughs> and some gopas are sitting behind Krishna, on the left side of Krishna, on the right side of Krishna, are 10 circles away from Krishna, 20 circles away from Krishna. But every single gopa is getting this experience of seeing Krishna face to face, feeding Krishna and being fed by Krishna. How could Krishna give this experience to everyone? So we can see only one person in front of us. If somebody is sitting behind me, I cannot see that person. But Krishna... He is one Krishna, he is not expanding himself into 16,000 forms like he did in Dwaraka. He is one Krishna, but he is making every single group of feel that Krishna is with him. Even when Krishna lifted Govardhan mountain also, under Govardhan mountain, so Krishna is standing in a threefold bending form 
and so many Vrajavasis are surrounding Krishna. Some are behind Krishna, some are on the left side, some are on the right side, some are in front, some are close, some are far towards the edge of Govardhan. <laughs> but every single Vrajavasi, whether it's Gopa or Gopi or a cow or a calf or a, um, or a monkey or a peacock, every single Vrajavasi is having the experience of seeing Krishna face to face, getting his loving glances and loving smiles. And Krishna's smile upon his Gopas, friends, is very playful, succulous. Krishna's glances and smiles uh, when he looks at Yesodha Mata, Ananda Maharaj and elders is very respectful. And Krishna's smile towards Radharani and Gopis is of a different flavor, Madhuri flavor. <laughs> like that Krishna can simultaneously reciprocate with different devotees in different ways. Why being in one form? That is Krishna's highest quality. <laughs> Apart from that, Krishna has many other qualities. So this quality of Krishna is nicely captivated by this one shloka. Ye yathamam prapadyante Ye yathamam prapadyante Tamsthathaiva bhajamyaham Tamsthathaiva bhajamyaham The way you approach me in a similar way, I will disappoint it. Generally, Krishna keeps this promise. But he fails to fulfill this promise in the case of Rajavasis and specifically the Gopis. Yashoda Mata was giving him milk and Krishna was drinking milk in Damodar Lila. Krishna is like a chataka bird and Yashoda Mata is showering uh, rain of her milk. Her milk is just a transformation of her intense Vatsalya Prima towards Krishna and Krishna is drinking milk. How much milk can a little child, two, three-year-old boy drink? And how much milk can a mother drink? <coughs> but this milk is transcendental milk. It's a transformation of our intense spiritual feelings, Vatsali Prima towards Krishna. Therefore, unlimited quantities of milk is flowing from her body. And Krishna is able to take it all. He's drinking. But in this transcendental competition that, that <laughs> went for a while, Krishna is taking. Why? Sometimes he's unable to drink all the milk. That little milk, like little droplets on his bluish face, this white droplets of milk appear like pearls. He's unable to take it all. Something is filling <laughs> on all sides of his mouth. Means Yashoda Mata had more prema than even Krishna can handle. <laughs> Her prema towards Krishna is more than Krishna's capacity to experience that prema. And in Madhurya uh, Rasa, Krishna tells the gopis, mm-hmm. Gopis, even if you give me one full lifetime of Brahma to repay the debt I owe you, I won't be able to repay. I cannot repay. Although I very confidently declared in Bhagavad Gita, I won't be able to fulfill that promise in your case. You are way beyond my ability to receive. Krishna is. But in general, in all other cases, mm-hmm. because Yashoda Mata's love for Krishna is very intense. When Krishna, when Yashoda Mata kept Krishna aside to save the Padmagandha milk, Krishna became very emotional and started crying. They are Amurishas. They are not false tears. They are not fake tears. They are real tears. Because Yashoda Mata's love and affection towards Krishna is very intense, very real, she is completely absorbed in her feelings uh, as a mother to mother of Krishna. In reciprocation to those feelings, Krishna also is completely absorbed in the mood of her child. He is not identifying himself as Maktahapara Taramnanya He is not thinking of himself as Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Maktaha Sarvam Pravartati Himar, but all Vishnu does. <laughs> I am not a Bhigna, I am not Swarat. I am a son of Mother Yashoda and I am a child who is neglected by Mother. <laughs> what will a child do when Mother neglects? He cries. He is crying. He is crying intensely. They are real tears. They are not fake tears. Sometimes Krishna produces fake tears also. Then Yashoda becomes little strict. Uh, Krishna just drops his eyes 
Rudantam Hurnya Prayagam Rudantam to produce more tears so that Ishwada Mata would become compassionate and would punish him as well. Okay, that is his <laughs> general partner. But this time, in Damodar Lila, Krishna completely uh, shed real tears. Is it possible to increase the volume slightly? Are yeah. we waiting for something? So Krishna said, the way we approach him in a similar way, he will listen to it. Now, in the ninth chapter, Krishna says, Yadi Krishna 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 he is equal to all. Samoham Sarva Bhutesh. He is equal to everybody. No partiality. Namya Dveshyos. I don't envy anyone. No Priya. I don't hold someone very dear to me. So no partiality. Man. But interestingly, the same shloka, apparently contradicting himself, Krishna says, Ye bhajinti tu maam bhaktya. Tu, but. You make a statement and you say, but. Means you are kind of negating it. <laughs> Ye bhajinti tu maam bhaktya mahiti te shuchapya. If you specifically worship me, I am more inclined towards you. All them equal to all, generally speaking. But I am more inclined towards my devotees. Uh, I can't treat my devotee equal to everyone else. He's special. <laughs> he's VIP. <laughs> he's not an ordinary person. So he says that. He's equal to all, but that equality is not blind equality. It is equality based on some criteria. That is Yaya Dhamma Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. Criteria he already said in the fourth chapter. In the ninth chapter he said, I am equal to all. I am impartial. But I am equal in the sense that my reciprocation with them is appropriate reciprocation, not blind equality. It's not literally equal treatment. It is appropriate treatment. If a mother has two children, three-year-old, seven-year-old. Three-year-old may require only little food, seven-year-old may require more food. The mother says, I am equal to both children and feeds the same quantity of food. <laughs> Is it equality? <laughs> so, the Yathama Prabhupada formula is applied in all dealings, not only Krishna and devotees. So, ye bhajimti tu maam bhaktya maiti te shutakyam. Still, this is not an invalid statement. He is still samoham sarvabhutish. If you become my devotee, I will be specially inclined towards you. I will be partial to you. Just accept it. <laughs> if you become my devotee, I will be partial to you. Hmm? But who can become my devotee? Anybody can become my devotee. Akama hasarva kama va moksha kama dharadhi tigreda bhakti yoga ni ijeta purusha param. I am inviting everyone to become my devotee. So, Sarvadharman Parityaja Mahamitam Sharanam Raja is not an instruction only to Arjuna. It is an instruction to entire humanity. So, if you become my devotee, I will become partial to you. But I won't stop you to become my devotee. Become my devotee first. Give hmm. me an arena of partiality. Hmm. I mean, say my devotees are there. Who is invited? Everybody is invited. <laughs> <laughs> you perform bhakti, I will become partial. I am impartially partial to everyone. Because I give equal opportunity to everyone to practice bhakti yoga and become an object of my passion. So this is another nature, another quality of Krishna, reciprocal nature. So that wow. nature is very clearly seen in this shloka. When Krishna entered the wrestling arena of Kamsa, when Krishna saw Kuralaya Peda, he killed Kuralaya, he killed Kuralaya Peda. Along with his elder brother, he just entered the wrestling arena of Kamsa. And all the residents of Mathura city, with their different mentalities, they glanced at Krishna and Balara. Different people are getting different feelings. Malla nama sharindra nama rabara hastri nama smaro murti maan. Malla nama sharindra nama rabara hastri nama smaro murti maan. Gopanam Sajano Satam Sri Nikudam Sastra Swamitro Sishuham Kyor Bhojapate Viradam Vidusham Tattam Param Yogi Nam Shri Nam Paradeva Tevat 
कृष्ण को के बोर्ड कर्म योग है ज्ञान योग है ध्यान योग है एंड भक्ति योग है एंड भगवत गीता बट ऑल दिस फोर योग कृष्ण अल्टीमेट एम्फोसिस इज ऑन भक्ति योग है कर्म योग मीन्स टू कनेक्ट विथ कृष्ण थ्रू वर्क यू मे वर्क फॉर समबडी बट यू मे नॉट लव दर्सन Any experiences? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. When you love somebody, you naturally want to serve that person. Means karma doesn't include bhakti, but bhakti includes karma. Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, mat karma krim, mat parabo, mat bhakta ha sangavar jita ha, mat karma krim. That karma is not a fruit of karma. Mat karma krim means it's a devotional activity. So bhakti includes karma. But karma may not include bhakti. Therefore, bhakti is superior to karma. Nana. You may know somebody. You may have great knowledge about somebody, but you may not love that person. But if you love someone, you want to know more and more. If you love Krishna, or you want to develop love Krishna, develop love for Krishna, you want to develop so much knowledge about Krishna's name, Rupa, Guna, Vi, in a devotional way, not in a scholarly way. Then, dhyana, dhyana means deep meditation, deep thinking. You may think about somebody, but you may not love that person. स्नेग्ध प्रवृद्ध श्याम स्नेग्ध प्रवृद्ध श्याम सर्व सौंदर्य संग्रह सर्व सौंदर्य संग्रह सर्वाय तचिदुर्गाहु सर्वाय तचिदुर्गाहु जातरुचिरानलम सुजातरुचिरानलम यस्टरडे वी डिस्कस दिस श्लोक फ्रॉम द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ कृष्ण सौंदर्य थैंक यू Yesterday, we discussed this topic yesterday. So we start today. Yesterday is our discussion. Sarva Saundarya Sangra means Krishna is the collection of all beauties. Prabhupada writes a brilliant purport. This is from Rudra Gita. Prabhupada writes a brilliant purport where he says that Krishna is the collection of all beauties. There are so many beauties in the spiritual world. There are so many beauties in the material world, and Krishna is the collection, Sangra of all the beauties. So physically, Krishna is beautiful, but there is another facet of Krishna's beauty. That is his quality. That is the beauty of his heart, not the beauty of his body only, but the beauty of his heart. What is that? Krishna gives more credit to his devotees than he takes for himself. It is Krishna who has orchestrated entire Kurukshetra war. It is Krishna who has. Um, Made plan for Kurukshetra war and guided the Pandavas in hundred different ways. Took the position of a chariot driver for his dear devotee Arjuna. He did so many things to orchestrate this Kurukshetra war, but he took a low profile. I don't pick up a weapon. I don't want the credit of destroying all the miscreants on the Kurukshetra battle. Although Krishna had killed more powerful demons, like. Agasur, Bakasur, Vatsasur, Vyamasur, Uthana. In front of Agasur, what is Duryodhan? Agasur opens his mouth. Duryodhan, Dushasur, Karna, Sikhani. And gone. Not in Shikha Vah. Krishna, as a little child, killed more powerful demons. And he empowered his devotees to kill more popular demons. Before coming to Iskhan, some of you are very fascinated to take birth in Iskhan. And grow. But before coming to Iskhan, I never heard of Hasur. I never heard of Yamasur. I never heard of Vatsasur. Bakasur, I know. The Bakasur people of Bhima. Mahabharat. Ah, Mahabharat Bakasur. <laughs> Not the uh, Bhagavad Gita Bakasur. So Krishna killed more powerful demons, but he allowed his devotees to kill more popular demons. Arjuna, you take the credit of killing Bhishma, Drona, Karna, Jayadratha. Bhima, you take the credit of killing all the hundreds and the Bhagavatam headed by Duryodhan. And what will you do? I, I, blow punch him and drive him. 
I have real vices. <laughs> and I will expect I'll do consultancy. <laughs> consultancy services. So I study. Not just that. When Arjuna took a vow that I will kill Jayadratha before sunset, Krishna created an ambience of sunset by, by hiding sun behind his Krishna chakra. So Krishna did many things. But he always took a low profile mm-hmm. and allowed his devotees to come forward. Nimitta Matram Bhava Samya Sachin. He said, Mayi Vaite Nihataha Purva Meva Nimitta Matram Bhava Samya Sachin. I have already killed them. So what am I supposed to do? That's what I was saying. Nimitta Matram. This become an instrument in my hands. I killed them, he manifest their death. Right? You just make it noticeable to everybody. That's all you need to do. So Krishna does everything and he gives credit to devotees. It is the Lord who has made the plan for Samdhanatha. When the devatas and the demons try to lift Mandara mountain, it is the Supreme Lord who came to help them. They could not lift Mandara mountain. So the Lord lifted it effortlessly, placed it on the back of Garuda, empowered Garuda to carry it and he himself sat on it and he brought Mandara mountain there. And he is the one who became Kurma and lifted a mandara mountain from bottom, which is the ocean. And he became Sahasrabahu, held the mandara mountain from top. And he empowered the devatas with Sattvaguna, he empowered Vasuki with Tamoguna, he empowered Asuras with Rajoguna. He also created some mystic clouds that are constantly showering some mild rains to cool them, because they are being burned by fire emanating from Vasuki Sattva. He also took the form of Ajita and he joined the devatas, he personally sent them in Kushan. How many things he has done? But when Halahal came, he took a back seat. Before coming to Iskwan, how many people know that all this master plan, blueprint for Samudra Mata was given by Lord Vishnu? But how many people know that Shiva drank poison during Samudra Mata episode? He gave more credit to Lord Shiva. Vaishnavana Mithashambo. Let Lord Shiva get the credit of protecting the entire universe from this hala hai and take a vaccine. And become Kurma. Kurma can at least be known. But Sahasrava, anyone knows? Ajita, anyone knows? Mystic clouds, anyone knows? Zatogon, Razogon, Tamogon, empowering them with all these three ones, anybody knows? And we need to know, even know that uh, the Lord lifted a mandra and brought it there. And after that, the Lord became more. So in this way, the Lord gives more credit to his devotees than he takes for himself. That's a great quality. Hmm. Whether it is Samudra Matan episode or whether it is uh, Kurukshetra episode. It is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who predicted that his holy name should be chanted in every town and village. Who manifested the desire to He brought holy name. So Mahaprabhu just predicted and Prabhupada gets the credit and the Lord is rejoicing in the uh, glorious activity done with Prabhupada. And Prabhupada also explains in that report that when Krishna was personally there in Vrindavan, many demons were coming and attacking him. But when Goswamis were there, they were dhira, adhira, janak, priyo, priyankaro, nirmatsaro, pujita. Even gentle people and ruffians are loving the Goswamis. The Lord gives more credit to his devotees and he takes for himself. Prabhupada also writes in another purport. When Ram had to cross the Lanka Ocean, he had to make a bridge. But when Hanuman, when Hanuman had to cross the Lanka Ocean, he just jumps. Right? <laughs> and in this Ramayan, which is so beautiful, there are multiple parts in Ramayan, but Sundarakanda is most beautiful. Sundari Sundari, Sundari Sundaro Ramaha, Sundari Sundari Sita, Sundari Sundaro Kapihi, Kim, Sundari Kim Na Sundara. Everything in Ramayana is extremely Sundar. Everything in Sundarakanda is so Sundar. In that Sundarakanda, Ram took a back seat. Hanuman, you are the hero. You cross Lanka Ocean. You burn Lanka. You hit Lankani. You kill Sindhika. You defeat Sarasa. You do so many things. You, you defeat Ravana also. You kill some of his sons and soldiers. So the Lord highlighted Hanumanji's quality and he took a back seat. Although he is the hero of Ramayana. This is how 
The Lord highlights the qualities of his devotees and he takes great pleasure in glorifying the qualities of his devotees and he takes a back seat. What great quality. The Lord is the one who empowered Ramananda Rai to speak all the finer nuances of Radha Krishna Tattva and Kanta Prima. Lord is like ocean. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the ocean. Mahaprabhu, uh, Ramananda is like the cloud that can extract water from the ocean. Sanchaya Rama Dika Bhakta Meghi So Bhakti Siddhanta Chayamrutani So Gauram Dhirete Ramanam Tirnaha So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is empowering Ramananda and giving the credit of describing Radha Krishna Tattva to Ramananda. Later, when Pratimna Mishra came to Lord, Ram, Lord, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, I want to hear Krishna Katha, can you please speak Krishna Katha? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, the very fact that you wanted to hear Krishna Katha shows that you are extremely fortunate. Who is most fortunate on this planet? One who has inclination to hear Krishna Katha. Nobody else. <laughs> But I don't know Krishna Katha. I only heard Krishna Katha from Ramananda. Better you go and hear. And he, he went and Ramananda is doing something there. He is just decorating all the Devadas, he is preparing them for the Jaganath Balabhanataka. Then he just came out. Pradyamana Shra came out. Then Mahabhu asked him, Did you go to Ramananda? Did you hear Krishna Katha? He is following up. <laughs> no, I did not uh, go because. He is uh, preparing Devadas as a Jagannath of Nathana. Then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Ramananda is so great, he still has spiritual body, he wouldn't get attracted to the material form of anybody. But I am the sannyasi still, I am not so self-controlled like him. He says like that. This is how Rama, the Lord is highlighting the qualities of Ramananda, making him the speaker. The Lord came down in the form of Lord Chaitanya to establish Yoga Dharma of Harinam Sankirtan. But he is not the Namachari. Haridas Thakur is Namachari. Mm. The Lord highlights his devotees. The Lord himself, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself wrote only eight shlokas of Sikshashtakam. But Sanatana Goswami, Rudu Goswami, they become authors of so many books. Mahaprabhu did not become temple president. But Rudu Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, they become temple president. The Lord empowers his devotees to perform inconceivable things. And he takes a low profile. He, you know, somebody glorifies him, he says, Hari, Hari, you know, you cannot glorify an ordinary person like this, I don't know anything. Vallabhata came and glorified Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Krishna Shakti Mina Nahitara Pradhatan. You are empowered with great Krishna Shakti. You are Krishna himself and you are also acting like a devotee of Krishna and you are inducing everybody to become devotees of Krishna. You are so great. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Me? I don't know anything. I have learned Bhakti Siddhanta from Ramananda I have learned Bhakti from Advaita Charya. It is Nityananda Prabhu who is my constant associate who gives me inspiration in Bhakti. And I have learned many other devotional principles from Sarubhanda Goswami. Like that Mahaprabhu glorifies with five mohas, he glorifies all the other devotees and he puts himself in a very low position. This is how the Lord takes pleasure in glorifying his devotees. Just like a father becomes so happy when the children become glorious, <laughs> uh, they do great deeds. Similarly, the Lord also becomes so happy when devotees are glorified. Bhaktana Manavartana. The Lord increases, expands the glories of his devotees. Prabhavya Sarvasatvata. The Lord expands the glories of his devotees. So, this is one quality of the Lord. To give more credit to his devotees than he takes for himself. That's why. Right. The Lord is doing his medium services to all the Pandavas. Sarathya Parisha Dasevana Sakya Gautya Sarathya Parisha Dasevana Sakya Gautya Virasana Nugamana Stavana Pranama Virasana Nugamana Stavana Pranama Sridhe Shupandushu Jagat Pranatim Cha Vishnu Sridhe Shupandushu Jagat Pranatim Cha Vishnu Bhaktim Karoti Drupatis Cha the Lord acted as a Sarathi, the chariot driver. Parashata, in the Rajasuya sacrifice, he is taking Agra Puja. Where is chariot driver position? Where is his position of receiving Agra Puja? Sarathya Parashata Seva is rendering services to Pandavas. 
Sakya acting like a friend, Dautya like a messenger. A messenger activity is such a mean activity, but he is acting like that. Then Virasana like a right watchman, Anugamana following their footsteps, Stavana praising them, Pranama offering obeisances to them. Whenever Krishna goes in front of the Pandavas, he offers obeisances to Yudhishthir Maharaj and Bhima. And he embraces Arjuna, same age. And he blesses Nagar and Sahaja. Perfect Another quality of action. Vishnu. Although he is the Supreme Lord Vishnu, who can receive obeisances from all the residents of all the planets and the universe, still, Snigdeshu Pandushu. Because Pandavas are very malleable with the will of Krishna, Krishna is rendering such menial services to the devotees. This is the quality of the Lord. To become so attracted and captivated and controlled with and captured with the love of his devotees and becoming a puppet in their hands. We will see more in Vrindavan episodes, but the Pandavas also are very dear to Krishna. Darshana, Sparsha, Samlapa, Shayanasana, Bhojani. We have six learning exchanges with other devotees, but Pandavas are having six learning exchanges with Krishna. Darshana, Sparsha, Samlapa, Shayanasana, Bhojani. So next, when Krishna departed, the goddess of earth, mother, that Bhumi Devi, she was remembering Krishna and Krishna's qualities. She enumerates 40 qualities of Krishna. How Krishna is truthful, gentle, kind, affectionate, forgiving. She remembers 40 qualities of Krishna and becomes so overwhelmed and breaks into tears and speaks the shloka. Master. Mm -hmm. Anantapar, we are unlimited. 
There are many masters in this world, but those masters, although they may be perfect in certain things, but they are not unlimited. They don't have unlimited and perpetual perfection. They are perfect for a while, and after that all the perfection goes away. <laughs> uh, or their body will dwindle, they may even die. But the Lord is Ananta Parama. Unlimited. Everlasting. Sarvagnam. Sarvagnam is one who knows everything. Acharya is right. Because Krishna is Sarvagnam, he is Kritagna. Sarvagnam is one who knows everything. Kritagna means Kritagna. Whatever you have done for the Lord, the Lord remembers it. Now, he is aware of it. No service rendered by a devotee with a sincere heart, whether big or small, is unnoticed. Krishna remembers everything. We may forget what service we have done, but Krishna remembers everything. And not just remembering, he is grateful, he will reciprocate. He will give us remembrance of what service we have done in the later lives also. As Prabhu, Adhikarada Prabhu was sharing when we were taking Prasad. Indra Maharaj rendered some service to the Lord. And the Lord remembered that service uh, in the next life also. When Indra Maharaj became Vijendra, the Lord became so grateful to Indra Maharaj that he remembered all the services that Gajendra has done as Indra Now Gajendra is in some difficulty. In Aarti, in distress, I must do something. In reciprocation with all the service that I have received from Indra So let me remind Gajendra of some prayer that he has learned in his past life. It is only with the Lord's inspiration that Gajendra recollected the prayer that he has memorized in the past life and offered that prayer. And in reciprocation with that prayer, the Lord came and saved him. He matched with him. He is the one who inspires. Gajendra to pray. And when he prays, he is the one who comes and protects. That is Krithapina. Generally, we become grateful to people when they give us something that we don't need, that we need, desperately need. If I'm very thirsty and I desperately need water, water sometimes somebody gives me water, I feel grateful. But I already drank one liter water, somebody gives one more water. <laughs> right? But what does the Lord need? He doesn't need anything. But he becomes grateful even for Patram, Pushitam, Palam, Tolam. If somebody offers Patram, Pushpam, or Palam, or Toyam with Bhakti, the Lord accepts it touches it to his head and then receives it. Right? Touching to head means you are valuing it so much. You are honoring it. You are acknowledging their emotions. Lord, but the one little push form, one little flower somebody gives, but if it's done with sincerity, the Lord accepts it, touching it to his head. Although these flowers are my Sushi, everything that exists in the entire cosmic manifestation is emanating from me. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mattaha sarvam pravartati and you plant one flower from one of my gardens and you offer it to me, what is it? The Lord wouldn't say that, he would catch it to his head and accept it. Dwaraka Vasis, while receiving Krishna and Dwaraka, they offer so many presentations. And Acharya is right that, so to go some himself says, what is the use of a lamp to the sun? Sun is the source of all heat and light. We are offering a gila. Like <laughs> uh, uh, what will you do with that light? Like, little flame. But it's not about what you are offering. It's about what mood. What mood do you have while offering? And similarly, the Lord is the source of everything. What will you do with your patram or pushpam or palam or toyam? But if it is offered with sincerity, the Lord will value it, treasure it, accepts it, because He is grateful for it. That's why. Uh, Uddhava says, Sarvagnam, Ishwaram is the Supreme Lord. Akuntha Vikuntha Vishnam. This, his abode, the Lord's abode, has absolutely no miseries. So someone who wants to get out of this miseries has to take shelter of the Lord. Even Dvaraka also says the same thing. Natasmate natasadam dhripanka jam virincha vairincha surindra vanditam. Parayanam kshema vihe chhatam param najat prakala prabhavet param prabho Natasvate natasada andhri pankajam O Lord, 
we have to constantly offer obeisances to your Angri Pankas of Lotus feet. Virincha, Brahma offers obeisances to Lotus feet. Vairincha, Brahma sends like Kumaras and Narayana, they also offer obeisances. Surendra, the king of all the others also offers obeisances. Virincha, Vairincha, Surendra Vanditam, Parayanam, Kshemam, Yechatam, Param. If at all somebody desires their own welfare, they must offer obeisances to you. They must take care of shape. Because we are never influenced by time. By the influence of time, we become old. The Lord will not. By the influence of time, we forget. But the Lord doesn't forget. Sarvadnam. Because He doesn't forget, He is Kratadnam. He is grateful also. He is aware of everything and He is grateful for everything. A grateful person will never forget the special favors that he or she has received from others. When there is gratitude, there is no forgetfulness. But when there is no gratitude, he forget all the special favors that we receive from others. Especially when we are helped by somebody spiritually. Spiritually somebody gave us inspiration, somebody guided us, somebody mentored us, somebody assisted us in advancement in spiritual life. We should never forget it. Krishna is so grateful for the little service rendered by his small devotees. How much grateful we should be towards Krishna and other devotees who are bringing us closer to Krishna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas. And Mother Sachi said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should stay in Jagannathpur. Accompanied by Nityananda, Jagadananda, Dhamodar, Mukunda, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Jagannathpur. One day, he called all of them. And said, My dear friends, Kityananda, Jagadananda, Damodar, Mukunda, you are my closest friends. I am extremely grateful to you. You are my best friends, best well wishers because you brought me to Jagannath Puri and showed me Jagannath. Whoever brings us close to Jagannath Ji, he is, he is uh, my dearest friend, he is the greatest well wisher. So the Lord is very grateful to these people in the mood of a devotee. And in the mode of Lord, the Lord is grateful to all the services rendered by uh, other devotees. That's why. So the Lord taking the offering to his head, can you give the reference to it? I'll let you read more about it. This is in some Acharya's comment, I can't recollect some Acharya's comment. Bhagavad Gita comment. Can you give it to me? No. I don't know. No problem. I am not sure about it now. So another quality of the Lord. Satya Vakya is very truthful. Now I just spoke something randomly here and there. But uh, we will pick up some qualities from the 64 qualities of Krishna as highlighted by uh, Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Samadhi. All 64 is not possible. Just some qualities selected once we take. Eighth quality is Satya Vakya. He is very truthful. Krishna promises Kunti Mata that nobody can harm your sons, Pandavas. I will protect them. He fulfilled his promise. He protected the Pandavas in various calamities and especially during Kurukshetra Vara. He brought the Pandavas safely back to Hastinapur. Uh, like that, there are so many examples. Then another quality of the Lord is Priyam Mada. He talks very pleasingly. After subduing Kaliya, hmm. you know what Lord Krishna said, Kaliya, I am sorry, <laughs> I had to subdue you. <laughs> uh, I had to be very harsh and rude with you. I had to pound on each and every hood of yours. So, but I am very affectionate towards all the Brajavasis. Your poisonous waters are troubling the Brajavasis. Therefore, I subdue you. And I'm banishing you. Please don't mind. <laughs> I'm banishing you. Get out of this place. So please don't mind. <laughs> like that, Krishna kind of spoke in an apologetic tone, very pleasing way. So even if you are being strict with somebody, if it is done with some sensitivity, if that strictness is balancing with sensitivity, it's acceptable. The strictness is also acceptable. Because the Lord destroyed the pride and envy of Kaliya. And later he pacified him, saying that, Oh, Kaliya, I had to do this because I wanted to protect the Vedas. Please understand my situation. 
Once you are transformed, you can stay. Right? But still, your presence will disturb the past lives. Let's go. Then Kali said, Oh Lord, whenever I have some role to play in your past lives, please call me. I will come as your driver. As Garuda is taking you, riding you to different places, I also want to take you, take you to different places. If you go to some South Indian temples, you see Krishna is riding on Kaliya. In Tirupati Brahmotsva, there is Kaliya Vaha also. Right? So the Lord rides on Kaliya. Uh, not that he is subduing Kaliya in some painting and then some store cabins. So Kaliya offered to be a carrier of Krishna also. In 11th quality, Supanditya. The Lord is highly learned. The Supanditya has two aspects. One is very knowledgeable of all branches of knowledge. You are knowledgeable about multiple things. Second is you are knowledgeable of proper conduct, proper etiquette. With friends, you have certain behavior. With seniors, you have certain behavior. With younger ones, you have certain behavior. Right? When all the Dwarakalasis came to receive Krishna, Krishna reciprocated with them Yatha Vidhi. Just as it behooves. When a little kid comes, Krishna may just bless the chain. When Brahmanas come, Krishna will offer blessings. When Krishna goes in front of all the wives of Vasudev, his mother and his stepmothers, he would treat all of them like mothers. In this way, Krishna is knowledgeable of proper etiquette and proper conduct. And he is knowledgeable of everything else. Right? is highly learned because he enlightened Brahma. He gave Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. And he gave Uddhava Gita to Uddhava. Mm -hmm. But other aspect is being very well aware of etiquettes and following the etiquettes. The twelfth quality is Buddhiman. He is highly intelligent. So this Buddhiman has two aspects. One is Medhavi. Second is Sukshma. Uh, Sukshma Dhihi. Medhavi means one who has sharp memory. And Sukshma Dhi means one who has fine discretion. Let's give some examples. Medhavi is one who can easily remember everything that is taught to him. Krishna, as a student of Sandhipani Muni, he uh, learned 64 arts in 64 days. He mastered all the arts. You can note it. Sukshma Dhi means he has fine discretion. Although you may be knowledgeable of so many things, you should also be knowledgeable of applying the right thing, the right format, the right context. Uh, kids are there, they are learning mathematics, they have so many formulas. A plus 2 whole square equal to A square plus 2 AB plus B square. <laughs> but when the exam teacher gives some question and they don't understand, this formula I have to apply. Any experiences? <laughs> You know formulas, but you don't know which the formula to apply with. <laughs> Sukshma Dhi means one who has fine discretion to act appropriately on the spur of the moment just as it is, as it behooves, relevant to the situation. On the spur of the moment, you go to an interview and you ask some questions. You know the answers, but immediately the answer does not come out. After you come out to interview how? I, I know this answer. <laughs> <laughs> Mountain and protected all the devices. But here 
He kept us at all the powers. He's acting like a humble student of Sandeep Rumi. Guruji student. <laughs> and as a deep person, I'm glad he loved him. I will not call Sudarshan Chakra. He was caught up in uh, this dark, darkness. They were unable to discriminate between highlands and lowlands. They brought us up every day. It was like they were shivering. They were wet. Everywhere it's dark. They collected firewood. They were coming back to the ashram. But they could not find the way. So they were caught up whole night. In such circumstances, you know what Krishna did? With one hand, Krishna held Sudama's hand. They had two hands. With one hand, each of them were holding the firewood collected for Guru. And with the other hand, they were holding each other's hand. They are teaching us a very, very important lesson. Just like Krishna and Sudama were caught up in this flood waters, we will also be caught up in Maya's environments in this world. So many tribulations and temptations come because of Maya. We should not leave two things. Number one, service to Guru. Number two, association of Vaishnavas. They are holding each other's hands and they are holding Guru's hand. So never give up the association of devotees. Never give up service to Guru. What service do you do? That's different. That's circumstantial. In this context, service is service to uh, service is firewood. In some other context, something else is the service. That's fine. But the principle of service to Guru should never be relinquished, and the principle of holding on to Sangha Vaishnavas should never be relinquished. So we are teaching this this important lesson. Sandhi Purmani is extremely anxious. What happened to my dear disciples, dear students? So he was anxious. He came out searching for Krishna and Sudama. Initially he could not come because everything it was dark. And as the sun rose in the sky, flood water is kind of you know, subdued. Then Krishna, then Sudama, Sandhi Purmani, along with few other disciples, came out to receive Krishna and Sudama. They both were coming with the firewood towards the ashram and Sandhi Purmani and other disciples were coming. On the way they met. Sandhi Purmani embraced both the boys and gave them a special blessing. You know what is the blessing? My dear children, may you never lose the meaning of all the mantras that I am talking. He is not just saying, may you never forget. May you never lose the meaning. Means, we may remember all the mantras, we may not be able to apply them in the right context. Right mantra in the right context. All files are there in the memory. Good style to pick up in which context they don't know. By pleasing Guru, by rendering humble medium service to Guru, Krishna and Sudama received a special blessing from Guru that you will be able to remember all that I taught you and you will be able to apply all the principles that I taught you in your life. At the appropriate moment. In the right, in the right context. This is a special blessing. On the other hand, you see Karana, he received so much knowledge from Prashara and he displeased Guru. And Guru said, when you forget, at the right moment, when you are most needy, at that time you will forget what I taught you. What's the point of having knowledge? You want a special curse, you will forget. At the right moment, you will forget. So this is uh, the, the result of displeasing Guru. So Sukshmadhi means to be able to adopt oneself to the circumstances, to act appropriately on the spur of the moment uh, in various situations of life. So Krishna has this quality of Sukshmadhi. When Krishna was in Dvaraka, uh, when Krishna was in Mathura, Kalayavana was about to come to attack Krishna with his three crore soldiers, 30 million soldiers. Simultaneously, Jarasandha came to attack him with his 23 Akshodhanis of armies. Right? Two armies are coming simultaneously to attack um, Mathura city. Then Krishna, because he had Sukshmadhi, mm. he is very, he has fine discretion. He immediately transferred all the Vrajivas, all the Mathura Vasis to Dwarka. Overnight, he erected Dwarka foot in Kushas Thari Dvipa in the middle of the ocean. And all the Mathura Vasis who were sleeping in Mathura, when they got up, they found themselves in palaces of Dwarka. 
Mahamantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare is also simply an address to the Lord and his energy. So to anyone who is constantly engaged in addressing the Lord and his energy, we can imagine how much the Supreme Lord is obliged. 
it is impossible for the lord to ever forget such a devotee it is clearly stated in this verse that anyone who addresses the lord immediately attracts the attention of the lord who always remains obliged to him the lord remains obliged he becomes so grateful when he chant hare krishna hare hey, hey, krishna hare hey, hey, krishna hare hey, hey, krishna <laughs> chanting now it attracts the mercy of the lord it attracts the gratitude of the lord example is uh, gajendra moksha okay so proper writing is proper therefore we have to learn some shlokas we have to chant hare krishna maha mantra we have to learn narasimha mm-hmm. prayers even in next life the prayer can come to our rescue mm-hmm. and invoke the presence of the lord mm-hmm. and that is the quality continue in that too in the episode so dama guru he grew up as a very poverty stricken brahman who had many kids wife living in a very they had to take hut no food to eat no inclination to even beg also that was his condition then sudama's wife started pushing him your friend krishna is the supreme personality of god he is the king of dwaraka he is so opulent he has 16108 queens why do go and beg some food from him give back some money from him beg some wealth so dama said no 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 how can i go and ask money from my friend no i cannot he was not at all uh, inclined to go actually sudama had a slight tinge of pride because of his detachment he was too attached to his detachment <laughs> he was thinking that how can i get nothing wrong for a brahman to get brahmana is thinking shitriya is not there and arjuna said bhiksha api ho ki i can beg and live krishna disappeared hey, you cannot beg you are not a brahman your kshatriya have your nature is to fight but if you have to push it in begging uh, profession you are not fighting with other brothers <laughs>
So he thought, let me just go into some palace and see Krishna. Which palace he will go? Which palace is there? Which palace? <laughs> Krishna is in which palace? There are 16,108 palaces. He randomly into, entered one palace. <laughs> that happened to the Rukmani's palace. <laughs> if he had randomly gone into some other palace, will he not find Krishna there? He find Krishna there? Because <laughs> Krishna expanded him. Now, he is not going to do And also, Krishna expands himself into 16,108 palms uh, and spends time with 16,108 types. In 16,108 palaces. So, he entered this palace, palace of Rukmani Devi. Then, Krishna just got up from his couch and saw, Sudama is coming. As if his elder brother Balaram is coming, Krishna just got up with so much reverence and respect and, and ran towards Krishna and embraced him. Vaham daridra papi yanko Krishna hashi vidi kirtani. I am a daridra, poor person, papi, simple person. Where is Krishna? He should be given the residence of God is a fortune, but still he is hugging me, he is embracing me. Vaho bhyam 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 He became very grateful to Krishna and Krishna brought Sudama and made him sit on his couch. Then Krishna personally started washing the feet of Sudama, offered him Argya, Padya, Achamaliya, Dhupa, Deepa, Naivedya, everything he offered. It's not just some formal reception given by a Kshitriya to a Brahman. It is a heartfelt, loving expression towards his friend. Otherwise, Krishna would not have tears. Mm -hmm. While washing his feet, Krishna had tears in his eyes. And seeing this great display of affection that Krishna had, all the palace residents, they, became, they were wondering, who is this? Kuchayinam, Marinam, Kshamam, Dvijam, Dhamari, Santatam. He had bones, red face, visible. He is looking so emaciated. Why Krishna is giving him so much of importance? But uh, Krishna is, is uh, very much absorbed in his, in displaying his love and affection towards Sudama. But interestingly, so Krishna did not give him a dhoti also. Hey, your, your, your clothes are very uh, dirty and they are torn everywhere. Take this new dhoti. He did not even offer the new dhoti also. He is giving food. He is giving argya, padya, achamriya. Not gold coins, not rupees or dollars. <laughs> uh, not, nothing else. Just giving some food and speaking some sweet words. And he says, do you know what happened in Guru? He has gone and has gone into all kinds of remembrances. Past remembrances. Now, Sudama never expected any money from Krishna. Therefore, he is not frustrated. Mm. When we have expectations, and when the expectations are not fulfilled, we get frustrated. When we don't have any expectations, still somebody gives something to us, we we'll become grateful. Sudama never even expected that he would get an audience of Krishna and he would get entrance into Krishna's palace. Mm. But he got it. He became grateful for it. He became overwhelmed. And Krishna, without giving any dhoti to uh, Sudhana or offering any uh, gold coins to Sudhana, he saying, what did you get from him? <laughs> he is not giving anything to Krishna, just some dhup deep and uh, agya padya. That only he gave, this formal worship only he gave. But he is asking, what did you get from me? We are seeing you for a long time. And Sudama is hiding. Wow. <laughs> now that Krishna is not giving me anything. <laughs> That's not a point of He is hiding it because Krishna is so opulent. He has so much to eat. He has so many queens and maid servants and ministers and soldiers serving him. This dry poha, if I offer to Krishna, he is believing that upset. So I will not give him. So he was not ready to leave. But still Krishna just grabbed it forcefully with it and opened it. He took one morsel of poha and then put it in his mouth and said, this is the best food I have ever eaten in my life. Just like Raghunath Das Goswami, he was eating some rich rice from the Gosha in Jagannath Puri. And Mahaprabhu came and took that and said, this is the best person I have ever eaten. <laughs> so the Lord gives like, we may not, not take it literally. The best food that is offered by Mother Yashoda and, uh, and Radharani. Radha but Krishna said, uh, this is uh, delicious. 
Now he took it. Then second morsel he was able to take, but immediately Rukmani Devi came and stopped him. The reason is, if you eat everything, what will you eat? What will my co-wife see? Leave some prasad for the mouth. Second, by accepting one morsel of food, you have given him so much opulence like in there. If you accept one more parcel, I will have to go as his meal statement. <laughs> Third, another reason, you have a loving wife. If you eat this hard rice, your stomach will get upset, please don't eat it. The three reasons, he stopped. So why I say all this story is that Krishna did not do a single rupee coin to our Sudama. He did not offer anything to Sudama practically. He allowed him to eat some food, sleep that night, and early morning Sudama got up and went back. How many Sudama was thinking? Krishna did not give me anything because he thought that I will become proud if I get some wealth. Therefore he did not give me anything. So Sudama reconciled it. But by the time he went to his home, he did not find his home. He found out he passed. His wife came out. In fact, Sudama's wife was very instrumental in destroying the prayer of Sudama. She is the one who inspired Sudama to go and pray, to go and beg charity from Krishna. Because he was taking pride in his poverty. The right kind of antidote for this pride in poverty is to make him belly. <laughs> and Bali Maharaj was taking so much pride in his prosperity. The right antidote for him is to make him poverty. <laughs> if you are proud of that, Krishna will make you beggar. If you are proud of your detachment, Krishna will give you so much opinions. That is Krishna. Another quality of Krishna. <laughs> Great quality. But from another perspective, apart from purification of Sudama's pride perspective, there is another perspective. Another thing, that day, when Sudama's wife got up from her sleep, she found herself in a big palace. For a moment she was a bit surprised, where am I? But within a moment she understood that the Lord has blessed my husband. You can see that. So Krishna became merciful on Sudama by giving him his prosperity. That news was first revealed to his wife. Krishna. Although she never met Krishna. Mm. <laughs> she is the origin of Sudama's transformation. A purification of that slight tinge of pride. And she is the one who was first informed about that mercy also. <laughs> <laughs> Although she did not have a direct meeting with Krishna. Mm. So by the time Sudama came, Sudama said already knew what all Krishna has done. But Sudama, for Sudama it's a surprise, suspense, surprise. So he came and he saw a big palace. Now the main question is, why did Krishna not reveal to Sudama that although I am not giving you anything, maybe you won't be able to carry all that now, <laughs> this emaciated body. <laughs> although I am not giving you anything, but I have already arranged a lot of wealth. Indra's wealth for him, great palace for him there. He did not say, you know why? Krishna felt so embarrassed. Krishna is great. Correct. He felt so embarrassed, so awkward. He said, Sudama served me beyond his capacity. He could not afford that four handfuls of poha. But still, he managed to get it to his wife, to other brahmanas, and offered it to me. Means he served me beyond his capacity. To befittingly reciprocate with him, I must serve him beyond my capacity. <laughs> but it is not within my capacity to go beyond my capacity. Now you are offering something very simple to the Lord, or simple to somebody. He's not a big thing to Don't, don't. Anonymous. 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 He is very just offering. Put my name. You go to some South Indian places. Every fan blood has the name of the runner. Every brick has the name of the runner. Sometimes you have to try to keep to them, but sometimes the donor has an expectation. Why my name is not written there? Why my name is not announced there? Why is not displayed there? If the one who received donation gratefully announces it, that's a different thing. If the offerer of donation demands for an acknowledgement and announcement and claps and glorification, that's a different thing. Right? So that's that's general expectation. So Krishna thought, what I am giving him 
is this Indra's opulence, which is insignificant. Even if they give him Brahma's opulence, that is insignificant. In comparison to the handful of Koha that I received from him, this is Krishna's credit. He felt bankrupt. He felt incapable of reciprocating with Sudama's service. Sudama, you have given me something that is beyond your capacity to properly reciprocate with you. I should offer you something beyond my capacity. There's nothing beyond my capacity. It means I can never repay for what you have done. So I'm secretly offering this to you and hate it like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure if <laughs> So this is Krishna's humility. Humility, gratitude, compassion, and you depend on Sudama's prayer also. You see, all these things are displayed. <laughs> that is Krishna's quality. So if you just meditate on one pastime, you will find hundreds of qualities of Krishna. And if you take one quality, you will find hundreds of pastimes that demonstrate, uh, in which Krishna demonstrated that quality. Both ways. In Gautami Tantra, the Shloka comes. Tulasi Dara Matrena, Tulasi Dara Matrena, Jala Situkena, Jala Situkena, Vikriyadi Tesa Vatmanam, Vikriyadi Tesa Vatmanam, Bhakti Bhyo Bhakta Vatsala, Bhakti Bhyo Bhakta Vatsala. Krishna feels that this devotee has purchased him and sold out to him. Why? He is using the Tulasi and Jala. That's all. You want some reference to this one? <laughs> little reference. If somebody offers some tulsi dala and little lee, little water to Krishna, Krishna feels so obliged and grateful, he said, he has purchased me. The Lord feels indebted to someone even if, has, even if that person chastises God. One example is Damodar Pandit. Damodar Pandit chastises Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why? Because uh, Mahaprabhu asked him, Damodar Pandit, you went to Navadvip, you served my mother, Sachi. So how is her bhakti going on? How is her devotional service? And Damodar Pandit said, whatever bhakti you have is only because of her bhakti. We <laughs> are trained by her in Krishna's devotional service. How can you inquire about her bhakti? Are you calling her? Are you eligible to inquire about her bhakti? And Mahaprabhu <laughs> Ramadhar Pandit, you have purchased me with this chastisement. I am sold out to you. I am your property. When a devotee is glorified in front of the Lord, how much the Lord feels so happy to see that? The Lord wouldn't mind being embarrassed or chastised or scolded by a younger devotee, Brahmachari, <laughs> always playing the role of a sannyasi, publicly also. He says, how much you have purchased me? This is the Lord's property. No self-centeredness. All this self-centeredness is there in conditioned souls, not in the Lord. Prabhupada writes in the second canto of the first brilliant. No master in this material world shares an equal amount of opulence with his servants. Yeah. Master is there in a big cabin, a big cabin. And the servant or the security guard is there right in front of the master's cabin outside without easy, sitting on a small wooden stool. We be observed in this world, but Krishna is not like that in this particular world. He gives equal amount of happiness to all his associates, all his devotees. In fact, he gives more happiness to his devotees than he experiences himself. Otherwise, why would he take the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Because his devotee, Srimati Radharani, is experiencing more happiness in her service to Krishna than he himself is experiencing. To taste her happiness, he became Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord is not an insecure master. If you drive the chariot of Arjuna, what will people think of me? What will be my public image? <laughs> <laughs> if I fall at the feet of Sudama and wash his feet and have tears in my eyes, what will people think of me? He doesn't have any fear of public image. The Lord, the Lord expressing his love for his devotees and experiencing the love of his devotees is a priority compared to everything else. That is his quality. He values genuine devotion, genuine emotion of his devotees. That is his quality. Everything else is the whole matter. All the protocols, and policies, rules, restrictions, prescriptions, prohibitions, social customs, Vedic regulations, especially in the form of Krishna, he crosses all of them to exhibit love for his devotees. 
he is Sudhradhavra, firmly determined. So, Satya Bhava wanted Parita Chakri, Krishna did the needful to get it. And Krishna left the Govardhan mountain to protect his devotees. He says, Tasmat Macharanam Goshtam, Tasmat Macharanam Goshtam, Mannatham Matparigraham, Mannatham Matparigraham, Gopaye Swatma Yogena, Gopaye Swatma Yogena, Soyam Nevrata Ahitaha, Soyam Nevrata Ahitaha, Tasmat Macharanam Goshtam, Mannatham Matparigraham. All these people have accepted me as, as their shelter, Charanam. Man Natha, Man Parikram, they accepted me. They, they accept me as my Natha, as Natha. Gopaye Svatma Yogena. I must utilize my spiritual potency and protect. This is my Vrata. He takes the form. This one will determine. Satya Vratam, Satya Param, Trisatyam. It's recited, it's not elaborate on it. Satya Vratam, Satya Param, Trisatyam. Satya Vratam, Satya Param, Trisatyam. Satya Syayonim, Nihitam, Trisatyam. Satyasya satyam rata satya netram Satyatma kam tvam sharanam prapanna God is fixed up in his love of protecting his devotees. Ranyas kinta intoma vijana ha paripasati Tiesham vitya dhiptana yodakshin bahamiham you made that promise, you will do the right thing. Yoga Kshima Mahamiha means the Lord will supply whatever the devotees lack and Lord will preserve the devo whatever the devotees have. Star, conditions of life. <laughs> whatever the conditions. Only if it is favorable for their advancement in bhakti, the Lord will preserve what the devotees have and Lord will supply what they lack. If it is not favorable, Lord will not supply even if they don't have anything. The Lord will not preserve even if they have everything. He can take away everything if it is unfavorable for their bhakti. That's what he has done to Sudama and uh, um, Avanti Brahma. For Sudama, he gave wealth. From Avanti Brahma, he has taken away wealth. From Bali, from Bali Maharas, he has taken away wealth. But in both cases, in all the three cases, the Lord is just acting as a revolution only. This Who's that? Fruit vendor. She got so many jewels. People may get excited. Oh, she got jewels. We should give fruits to Krishna. Bhaktaram Koshtam Thalam Kayam. Get some jewels. Bhaktaram Maidhuryam. Maharakatha. Neela. So we get all this. But she did not get excited with seeing the jewels. Jewels were not exciting. She was excited with the smile on Krishna's face. Yes. Offer fruits to this boy, he will smile. That is an ecstasy, mm -hmm. not jewels. So Nama also, even after getting so much of wealth, he was not attached to the wealth. He was not attached before also, but he had a slight tinge of pride in his poverty, but that pride is gone, wealth is there and is unattached. Mm -hmm. If the Lord feels confident that his devotees are, will never be distracted by any amount of wealth, the Lord will give them wealth. Mm. If the Lord is, fortunate, Lord is confident that my devotee will not be distracted or deviated if he has fame, the Lord will give him fame. But if the Lord thinks that way, if he becomes famous, he may get distracted from bhakti. If he becomes very powerful and wealthy, he may get distracted uh, in bhakti. So let me not give him this. So the Lord is always very sure. Bhaktanam shama bhipsataha. Bhaktanam Sham Abhipsata. You know where is this line coming from? First canto sixth chapter. Naradamani in his past life was the son of a maid servant. Hmm. And his mother dies because of a snake bite. Hmm. Immediately, Sutta Goswami says, Bhakta Naradamani says, Bhaktanam Sham Abhipsata. The Lord desires auspiciousness from his devotees. Therefore, this mother dies. What is the logic in this? Only mother. Only son, five-year-old boy. Now, mother day means the son has absolutely no protector. So, how can a devotee even perceive or understand that the Lord is my well-wisher? Uh, he separated me from my mother in this context, being my well-wisher. But his boy understood. He thought, proper rights immediately. 
This is the way of dragging a sincere soul towards the lotus foot of Krishna. Correct. The kidding mother? What kind of statement is this? Or what is like this and sloka is like that? How do we understand this? Let's, let's analyze this. This lady, the maid servant, before snake bite, what was she doing? For the last four months, she was serving Bhakti Vedanta sages. She was not bitten by snake before four months, after this four months of monsoon season. This child, Narada, this little child, son of maid servant, if she, if he could render so much service to the Bhakti Vedantas and hear Harikatha from him and advance from Shraddha to Prema stage, what about her mother? What about his mother? There is no mention that she went to Prema stage, but we can conveniently understand that she did a lot of service to Bhakti Vedanta sages. She would definitely be spiritually advanced and after her death, either she would have gone to the spiritual world or at least she would have got another opportunity to practice working in a better situation instead of working as a great servant in 10 houses at the school. Bhaktanam hmm. Shamajipsata. We may think it's injustice done to the Lord. But the Lord will never be injustice to his devotees. He will relocate the devotee from one place to another place only for the devotee's advancement, spiritual advancement. So, this boy became Premi Bhakta, eventually he became Naradavan. Yeah. And that whatever little material attachment is there, that is terminated and both are advancing spiritually. This is how the Lord always desires auspiciousness for his devotees. Next. Another quality of the Lord. The Lord is Uttama bhava pishuna malaval guhasaram Uttama bhava pishuna malaval guhasaram Vidava loka nihato madano piyasam Vidava loka nihato madano piyasam Sammuhya chapa majahat pramadottamastaram Sammuhya chapa majahat pramadottamastaram Yasyendriyam vimathitum kuhaka irnasi Uddhama Bhava, on the things of Krishna and Dwaraka, they had grave expressions. Pishuna, Amala, Varidu, Hasa, spotless smiles. All their feminine attributes are so top class that even Cupid gets mesmerized. Even Shiva gets captivated. In fact, we were discussing, right? Then Cupid. But any uh, conjugal affairs or male-female attraction to happen in this material world, Cupid shows, Cupid shows his arrows, Pushpavan. So with the same intention, Cupid comes to Dwarka. Before even he showered any uh, flower arrows, Krishna and the Dwarka queens are getting attracted to each other already. What does it mean? There is absolutely no tinge of materialness in Krishna's conjugal affairs with his queens or even the gopis of Vrindavan. Material Cupid has no role to play in Krishna's conjugal pastimes, Madhurya pastimes. Sammo Pya Chayapamaji has been bewildered, I have no role to play here. He, he is frustrated, he gives up his work. Sammo Pya Chayapamaji has been bewildered, he gives up his work. But Krishna's Senses are never agitated by the feminine attributes of his queens. Krishna is attracted to his devotional service only and not the feminine attributes. Of course, the feminine attributes also are manifestation of spiritual potency. But let's see from uh, the material world's perspective. Many times a, a person is attracted to the attributes of the opposite gender the physical attributes of opposite gender, but that kind of attraction is not there. That kind of material, lusty attraction is not there between Krishna and his queens. It's totally spiritual, pure, loving attraction to each other. That's what the shloka teaches us. He is a conqueror of his senses. Another quality of Krishna is Kshamashmila, forgiving. Indra, how much havoc Indra has created in Indra? So many demons came and attacked the peace of Vrindavan. If you see Potana, Dranavarta, Chakatasar, Nagasar, Vatsasar, Vyomasar, Keshi, Arishtasar, so many demons attacked Vrindavan, disturbed the peace of Vrindavan. 
Although so many demons attacked Vrindavan, no demon has created as much havoc as Indra created in Vrindavan. Hmm. He defeated outsmarted all the demons. <laughs> Even Adhasur, amongst all the demons which attacked Krishna, uh, Adhasur is a little more fierce because Adhasur did not target only Krishna, Adhasur targeted and entire Kohan community. And killed all the boys, all the cars, and their parents in there. But in the surplus Adhasra also. He wanted not only not only to kill all the Vrajavasis and cows, he wanted to destroy the entire Vrindavan only. He wanted to inundate Vrindavan. Krishna's favorite land and favorite associates, he targeted them. When a devotee is not in proper consciousness, such a devotee can create more disturbance in a spiritual community than an outsider. The outsiders, demons who are visiting Vrindavan, they created less disturbance. But Krishna's devotee, uh, Indra, he created more disturbance. So when we are not in proper consciousness, we can disturb the spiritual society more than an outsider. But Krishna is very Whatever he has done is mighty. Nirabhati. <laughs> so he can keep in there. But Indra Puja is permanently cancelled. <laughs> I am not taking away your post, but Indra Puja is permanently replaced by Govardhan Puja and Vaishnav calendar. You just have to take it. No one can do that. <laughs> this is the necessary punishment and shows the necessary strictness. But he fights. He accommodates. Api Chetsu Dhrajaro Bhajati Mamaranya Bha Sadhu Leva Samantam Yaha Samgya Dhyama Sato Hi Sadhu. Sadhu Leva Samantam Yaha. I consider a devotee Sadhu. Very soon he will be reinstated. So it's such a hope giving statement by Krishna. That does not mean a devotee deliberately performs mistakes. By mistake, if a mistake happens, Krishna practices. Deliberate mistakes, of course, definitely Krishna will take some action. But accidentally, incidentally, circumstantially, unintentionally, if somebody does a mistake, Krishna practices. And a devotee, when he does a mistake, a devotee realizes the mistake, admits the mistake, he apologizes for the mistake, and rectifies it if it is possible, and tries not to repeat it and sincerely repents for it and remembers it. Remembrance is very important. When we do some mistakes, let's remember our mistakes. Not to become depressed, but not to repeat it again. So our remembrance of our past mistakes should not make us egoistically regretful and become depressed. But they should only help us not repeat that mistakes again and be more determined and be more prayerful. And also, remembrance of our past mistakes will keep us humble. When we do something great, people are praising us. But at that time when we remember, they are praising me that I am so great, but 10 years back I was like this. 10 days back I was like this. I did this mistake. So that remembrance will keep us humble and not allow that praise to get into our head and make us more puffed up. And also remembrance of our past mistakes will make us grateful. I was doing this mistake, now I am here, I am grown up, I am I improved. Who helped me to improve? Mm. Some devotees. Mm. I can become grateful. Proper says, if a devotee must re remember his past fallen condition and regret for it and repent for it. All the Reactions to one's simple activities are burnt in the fire of honest repentance. Papa writes in the first hand reading chapter. Unfortunately, Indra repented definitely for his mistake. But apart from repenting for his mistake, he also uh, wanted to escape punishment. He was thinking, Krishna only protected the reservoirs. He did not be punished. He did not punish me yet. Maybe he will call Yamaraj and punish me. Vishnu uh, Sekhar Thakur writes like this. He wanted to avoid punishment. He wanted to escape punishment or escape atonement. Therefore, he repeated the same mistake again in Paris at the episode. 
there is a cause and effect relationship between these two mistakes. Again, Krishna forgave. In Parijat episode, he fought with Indra, he taught him a lesson, again he forgave. Okay, fine. <laughs> that is Krishna's forgiving attitude, tolerance. Once you chant Hare Krishna, once you become devoted to Krishna, Krishna will take our responsibility, just like a loving father forgives the repeated mistakes of a child, Krishna also forgives and accommodates us. That does not mean devotee takes advantage of Krishna's magnanimity and deliberately commits mistakes, but if a devotee happens to accidentally commit mistakes or become a little carried away, so Krishna will somehow forgive and accommodate him. Right? That, that nature also devotees need to imbibe as much as practically possible. Mm. If the offense is very grave, of course that's a different thing. Next. A person who tolerates the offenses of others, this we have discussed, Gambhira. Kambhade Yalam Sharanam Rajam is coming. Very soon it's coming. I think I need to move past the time. 8.45. How much time do you do? Two hours. Two hours. This is Friday. Friday night. No, we can cancel. We can cancel. Okay, let's discuss. <laughs> 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 okay. He's down here. He's very grave also. A person who is grave uh, is so absorbed in his gravity that other people may not be able to understand what's there in his mind. Mm. Just like ocean is said to be very grave. Gambhiriye Ambodhi Koti. Mahaprabhu is also described as in gravity, Mahaprabhu is equal to one crore oceans. Ocean is very clear. What's hidden in the depths of the ocean, not many people will understand the standing on the shore. Right? Similarly, Krishna is also clear. Krishna says, Nahiyasya karhi chitrajan puman veda vidhipsitam yadvi jignasa yayukta bohyanti kavayopihi So he says, in trying to understand Krishna's intentions, even great kavis and philosophers also get, become completely bewildered and confused. That is Krishna's gravity. To that degree, Krishna can be grave. Also, in another instance of Krishna's gravity is Brahma uh, Mohanalila. Brahma came in front of Krishna and begged forgiveness from Krishna. Krishna. I am like your child, you are like my mother. What's the proof? Just some time back, you showed the entire universe <coughs> within your belly to Mother Yashoda. And I am there inside the universe. <laughs> universe is in your belly and I am inside the universe. Means I am like a child in the womb of Mother. <laughs> and you are the mother. And Brahma is saying this standing in front of Krishna. Krishna was six year old, Brahma has four heads. He's <laughs> That is inconceivable. Krishna is inside everything and outside everything. Brahma is inside Krishna and outside Krishna also. <laughs> it's inconceivable quality. <laughs> then he says, I am very sorry. He's very good. Then he says, Vrindavan is glorious. Brajavasis are glorious. And I want to become a dust particle in Vrindavan. I want to get uh, dust from the lotus feet of all the Brajavasis. I want to become a shrub or a creeper or a blade of grass in Vrindavan. He's saying many things. Krishna was very grave. He did not speak a single word. Can you imagine? At least in front of Naradam, um, Indra. When Indra came to beg for the rest, Krishna spoke many things. He gave some warning, caution note, and consoled him, accepted a Vishayak. Govind Kundi Swam, Sri Kundi Swam. So many things happened when, when uh, uh, Indra came. But when Brahma came, Krishna did not speak a single word. He did not even look at him. He looked like this courteous in his hand. You clear the place, I have to go and play with my friends. <laughs> I will take my lunch. <laughs> I interrupted my lunch. Because all the original boys that Krishna has hidden earlier, they again manifested on the bank of Yamuna in the same spot, in the same scene. One year back, Krishna just came out of that assembly to sit for the taps. Now he will go back after hearing Brahma's prayers. And all the gopas will say, Krishna, you came so early. You found the taps so early. Even we did not even eat one morsel of prasad also in your absence. Come, come join us. They will say. But what happened to uh, Brahma? He felt so repentant. 
He could not understand what is there in Krishna's mind. So Brahma went back to Buddha Loka and was still more repentant. So he just could not handle it. He went to a place called Antar Jita and started worshipping the Lord, meditating on the Lord. He did see a tapasya. Then the Lord manifested as golden Gauranga and said, My dear Brahma, now you have so much social status. And you are taking pride in your social status. In my next incarnation, as, as uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you will take birth as Hridas Thakur in a Yavana family, deprived of any social status or any special privilege. In those days, it was an untouchable uh, family. You will take birth in that family. In such a humble state of mind, you will be able to chant the holy names of Krishna. You will be able to appreciate my glories. Then I will make you Namachari. Yeah. When, when Brahma became humble, he could understand and appreciate the glories of Krishna and Vrindavan, as we discussed yesterday. But when, uh, and when Brahma is totally deprived of any social status, as Namacharya, in such a humble state of mind, Kirtaniya Sadahari, he will be able to send the holy names of Krishna. Yeah. So much so that Krishna will make him Namacharya. Brahma, as Hrita Stakari was saying that, Oh Lord, I cannot see your disappearance faster. Mm-hmm. I only want desire. Just keep your lotus feet on my chest and my heart. Allow me to see your beautiful face. Allow me to see Sri Krishna Chaitanya and depart from this way. Mahaprabhu granted it. But before that, Mahaprabhu said, Haridastaku, you are departing. If you depart, how will I survive in bhakti? <laughs> then Haridastaku said, If an insignificant ant dies, what difference does it make to this world? Oh Lord, don't keep in illusion. Where is Brahma wanting to test Krishna? Krishna. And where is Haridastaku saying that I am more insignificant than an ant? Than an ant? If I die, it doesn't make any difference to this universe. This is the humility expected of a devotee. If you think we are significant in any way, we are far, far away from the more that Mahaprabhu expects for us. If we think if we are great, we are better than others, we are superior to others in any way, then, then Kirtan Yasadahari is far, far. Away from us, that we can see. Krishna's Nam Piriyata we are discussing. <laughs> Next, he is the poorest of the year. There are multiple examples, Bhumi Devi, and even, even all the Nagapatnis uh, praising, they are praising Lord Krishna, Krishna your passion. Anybody, even if it's your son, you will kill, kill the son or punish the son if they have done some mistake. So there is the equi poorest nature, magnanimity. Generous, charitable. We discussed Sudama episode elaborately. Corona, kind. Okay, let's meditate on this. With this, we'll conclude. So, it will take half an hour to conclude this. <laughs> there is a beautiful shloka in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna repeats it twice in the ninth chapter and in the eighteenth. He says, Manmana Bhavad Bhatto Manmana Bhavad Bhatto Madhya Jeeva Namaskuru Madhya Jeeva Namaskuru Manmana always think of me. Bhavad Bhatto become my devotee. If you are always thinking of Krishna, are you not a devotee? Why Krishna has to say it twice? It is essential shloka, conclusive shloka, essence of the essence of the essence of the essence of all scriptures. You see, Gita is the essence of all scriptures. Sarva Upanishad Dogavo, Dogdha Gopalanandanaha. So all the Upanishads are like cow. And the milk of that cow is Bhagavad Gita. So essence of all scriptures is Gita. Essence of Gita is the middle six chapters of Bhakti Yoga. Essence of that middle section of Bhakti Yoga is the middle two chapters, nine and ten. Hmm. Essence of that middle two chapters is Manana Bhama Bhakti Essence of essence of essence of the essence of essence. Essence for one. Essence for four. <laughs> that is Mamana Bhavan Bhakti Shloka. In this shloka, 
which is supposed to be the essence of everything. How can Krishna repeat these two statements? Manmana, Bhavatya. Always think of me and become my devotee. The implication is, you can always think of Krishna without becoming a devotee also. Is it? Kamsa. Kamsa. Here and negative. You can always think of Krishna with a negative emotion also, but Krishna said with a devotional emotion, bhava mat bhakto, with a positive emotion, spiritual emotion, you always think of me, not like Hiranya Krishna. Hmm? Then Madhyaji Mahana was going clear. So on these four things, Manmana becomes even more essential. Krishna conscious. Madhyaji, one may worship Krishna, but without having loving feelings towards Krishna. So, one may mechanically do things. Man Namaskar, one may offer obeisances to Krishna, this is mechanically. You offer obeisances, how? Oh. But Manmana is more important. Smartav Yahasaka Tam Vishma Vismartav Yona Jatichit Sarve Vidhi Shedhasya Eta Yodeva Kinkaraha. Always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna is the essence of all the prescriptions and prohibitions in the entire Shastra. In all the Shastra. So, uh, Krishna said Manmana, which is like always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. What exactly does it mean to always think of Krishna? Ramanandaya said, gave us this beautiful statement. Mahi apara karunya saushirya saundarya madhurya gambhirya audarya vatsanya jaradhau nivishta manabhava. How many of you know this? How many of you know this? Oh, I learned this from Madhurya. Mahi apara karunya means compassion. Saushirya, good character. Saundarya, beauty. Madhurya, sweetness. Gambhirya, gravity. Audarya means benevolence, mercy. Benevolence, magnanimity. Vatsarya, affection. Jalatho, jaladhi means an ocean. Seven oceans. <laughs> Manmana means to immerse or to bathe our minds in the seven oceans of Krishna. Yeah. Krishna is a Karunya Jaladhi, Saushilya Jaladhi, uh, Saundarya Jaladhi, Madhurya Jaladhi, Gambhilya Jaladhi. And all apart. And all apart. <laughs> all are, uh, like you can't. Unprecedented. Uh, Unprecedented. Unparalleled. You cannot find its vastness or depth. Mm-hmm. Unlimited. You can't find the shore, you can't explore the depths. Mai apara karunya saushirya saundarya madhurya audarya vatsari jaladhau nivishta manabha Immerse your mind, bathe your minds in this seven oceans in Krishna. Are you ready to bathe now at 9 o'clock? Haribo! Haribo! Let's bathe in the first ocean now. Haribo! First ocean is karunya jaladhi. Karunya jaladhi means the notion of compassion. The This Baki, the sister of Baka, there is a glorious family of two brothers and one sister. Bakasa, Aghasa, and Kutta. Two brothers and one sister. There is another glorious family. They are not brothers and one sister. There are two brothers and one sister. Here are two brothers and one sister. This Baki came with a malicious intention to kill Krishna by applying poison on her body. Aho baki yam stanaka alakutam jigham saya paaye ratya sadhvi Asadhvi, she is unchaste. Jigham saya, she came with a poisonous intention. Leave her with him, dhakta vichitam tatonam. But Krishna has given her the position of a mother in us in the spiritual world. Kambada yadam sharanam bhativa. Who else could be more merciful than Krishna? Who else is a worthy object of mercy? 
But who shelter can I take other than Krishna's shelter? Pad bhyam bhakta hridista bhyam vandya bhyam loka vanditai Angam yasya samakramya bhagavan api tatstanam Yadu dhanya pisaswarga bhavapajana digatim Krishna bhukta skanakshira kibuga vodug matara Pad bhyam bhakta hridista bhyam Krishna's lotus feet are always meditated upon by bhakta, devotees. Bhakta hudis tabhyam. Vandhya bhyam loka vandhi dai. Means those people who are accustomed to receive obeisances from others, they offer obeisances to Krishna's lotus feet. Vandhya bhyam loka vandhi dai. Putana did not just get darshan of Krishna's lotus feet. Angam yasya ha samakram ya Bhagavana pitatstana Putana is embraced by Krishna Putana says, leave me, leave me If Krishna embraces you, will you say, leave me, leave me? Putana is saying, leave me, leave me But Krishna is not leave me That's our fortune Always he did not want to embrace Krishna Krishna is forcefully embraced, not leaving on the thing Right? Angam yasya ha samakram ya Bhagavana pitatstana Yadu dhanya pisasvarga bhavapajana nigatim Krishna bhukta stana kshira Kimuka vodu matara Although she is a yadu dhanya, she is a witch, she is a rakshasi She got the position of the mother of Vrindar Singh Goloka Vrindar, assistant of mother Ishwata Want to speak of all the gopis and the cows in Vrindar Who gave their milk to Krishna lovingly Hey Krishna so that is Krishna's compassion. He is Kaurunya Jaladi, extremely compassionate. Especially in Vrindam, he is more compassionate. Krishna Sikhar Thakur says in the 12th chapter of 10th uh, canto, Adhars episode, in Vrindam, Krishna is more fortunate, more versatile. Kaurunya Jaladi. So we bathe in one ocean, one ocean. Hmm. we didn't explore the depths, hmm. we didn't explore the expanse of the ocean. We just think. I took this, took this, took drops and sprinkled on us. So that is Kairunya Jaladi, who does this like this. Then Saushinya Jaladi. Yesterday we discussed, right? Day before yesterday. Saundaryam lala nari dhairya dalanam lila arama stambhini Viryam kantukita atri varya bhavalat pare parar dhamguna Shilam sarva janhanu ranjana maho yasyaya masutrabhur Shilam sarva janhanu ranjana That is Hushilya Jalati He is an ocean of good character He is an ocean of great compassion He is an ocean of good character also He is very respectful He is very humble Whether it is in front of his parents Or in front of his gurus and the paramani Or in front of elders or stepmothers He demonstrates his divine character. You may say, he is feeling butter, he is speaking lies in front of Mother Ishwara. That's shade, small shade. Mm -hmm. So Krishna, imitating the nature of a small child, he does all the mischief in that. That is a grown-up one. He, grown-up young prince, he is exhibiting, demonstrating good character, exemplary, exemplary character in all circumstances. But whenever he shows some cleverness, Whenever he, whenever he exhibited some quote-unquote human faults, these faults are special ornaments on him in his character. So Krishna is not attached to uh, being uh, very sober or very official or very formal. Mm -hmm. Ramachandra is much more Krishna. Mm -hmm. But Krishna has multiple shades and he can do anything. <laughs> he can speak nice words, he can induce others to speak nice words. <laughs> He is Saushilya Jaradi. He is a notion of good character. Then third, Saundarya Jaradi. Saundarya, yesterday, two two and a half hours, we elaborated on Saundarya. One, one example of Saundarya. Idam te mukham ho jam kinda nilai Vritam kundalai sthita rakaisya gopya Mohusham vidam bimba Satyavati said, 
Varam Deva Dhamma Dhananta Vishnu. Oh, I just want, ah, what is this? Varam Deva uh, Moksham na Mokshavati Mahanda. He says, Idam Te Vapurnata Gopala Balam Sadami Manasi Avirasna Kimanye. Let this beautiful form of Bal Gopal be manifest in my heart always. Then he starts meditating on the form of the Bal Gopal. Itam te mukham hoja matyanta nilay, atyanta nilay, very bluish face. Vrtam kuntalai sridhara paisya gopya. Vrtam kuntalai hi, kuntala, means curly locks of hair. Krishna's beautiful form is encircled by curly locks of hair. Paisya gopya, and bluish face with some reddish tints and uh, Yashodamata is constantly kissing the cheeks of Bal Gopal. Then, Mohuschum vitam bimbarata dharamme And his lips are reddish like Buddha food. Manasya virastama lam lakshalami Let this beautiful form of Bal Gopal be manifest within my heart. Alam lakshalami What is the use of many other benedictions? He accepts all that. No moksha, I don't know moksha. But later he became very greedy. Satyavartana. He thought, I am asking Krishna to be manifest within my heart. I wanted to relish Krishna's beauty within my heart. Why not see him directly face to face? Sakshat darshan, face to face darshan is considered superior too. <laughs> you know, seeing him in the heart. <laughs> so I want Sakshat darshan. But that what am I supposed to do? Namo Deva Dhamu Dharanta Vishnu Prasida Prabhodu Kajala Pimagnam Kripadrishti Drishyami Dhirambatanu Vihane Shamamadyam Vedashi Drishya Kripadrishti Drishyati If you chant the holy names of the Lord, Deva, Dhamodara, Ananta, Vishnu, Prabhu if you chant the holy names like this, then he will show Krupa Yes. That's Karmi Jalde again. <laughs> and also express your condition. Give your CV. <laughs> Resume. <laughs> In that you write all your qualifications. <laughs> what are the qualifications? Dukha Jala Abdhi I am immersed in an ocean of network of miseries. Take me from this ocean and put me in the ocean of your Karmi <laughs> Karmi Jalde. I want to transfer from this ocean to that ocean. This is salt water ocean. That is sweet water ocean. This transfer will be there. From nectar ocean. Krupa drishti vrishtya atidhyanam bhagam. Not only I am immersed in an ocean of network of miseries, I am atidhyan, a very poor, very fallen. And agnam, I have no intelligence to come out of this ocean. Only we have to lift me up and replace me somewhere else. Reload me somewhere else. By giving the Saksha Darshan. Akshi Darshan, may you be visible to my eyes. Mm. So basically, uh, the Lord is so beautiful. Sondarya Jaladi. And people who are beautiful may not be merciful. People who are merciful may not be beautiful. But he's both. Yes, Sondarya Jaladi also, Karuni Jaladi also. So, my first question. Distributing the holy name of Krishna even to the most fallen, not seeing 
their nationality, their gender, their background, their qualification, what prerequisites they have. There is there's some little sincerity. Kirtan Krishna recommended for Krishna's love. So that's how he's all that. Karuni is compassion, uh, which is shown when when other person seeks it or doesn't seek it also. But Audarya benevolence is that uh, you show that benevolence, Audarya, despite lack of qualification. Hmm. I mean, compassion also can be shown like that. But here in Audarya, the 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 uh, qualification of the candidate is not at all considered. And even if people who have opposite qualifications also, they will become more of a candidate because they see mercy. And I don't know much about Sanskrit uh, uh, meanings, but uh, simple uh, so compassion and uh, other is little extra, means an extreme degree of compassion, little deeper than compassion. That's what it seems. <laughs> Next, Vatsanya Jalati, Mother Sumiti, tells Dharma Maharaj, I am just one mother. I can shower affection on you like one mother. But Krishna's Vatsanya is like 10 million mothers put together. Vatsanya. Evam Sandarshita Hinga. Vatsalyata is at one level. Vashyata is at a higher level. Vatsalya means we are here. We are showing compassion and affection on somebody here. Vashyata means they are wherever they are, they are coming under their control. Pritya Vashyata wants to be ahead. Aham Bhakta Paradhim. Aham Bhakta Paradhim. Bhakta Ejjitattam. Bhakti Bhattam. Bhakta Vashyata. These are the words used to describe Krishna's quality of being controlled with the law of his devotees. We began today's discussion with that. Next. Krishna Krishna Mahabhaga Tannatham Gokula Prabhu on the rejoices whenever they are in some difficulty, they glorify the Lord like this. Oh Lord, you are Bhakta Vatsala, please protect me. Protect us. Looks like the others became angry with us. They are showing some extreme degree of pain. Next, Krishna is very humble. In the Rajasuya sacrifice, in the past, in the Rajasuya sacrifice, Yudhishthira Maharaj was taking down from his chariot. Krishna got down his, from his chariot so swiftly and he ran towards Yudhishthira Maharaj's chariot before he could even get down and he opened the door. Right? So he was giving so much of respect to Yudhishthira Maharaj because he is the king. Krishna was not the king. He is king of sweetness, he is king of many things, but Yudhishthira Maharaj is the official king of is Dwaraka or Matra, Krishna is like one of the princes in the Hindu dynasty. So Krishna gives so much of importance to him. Then Sharanagata Palakaha, protect from the surrender. We have so many such examples. Another beautiful uh, quality of Krishna. Krishna, to show compassion upon his devotees, he would even sacrifice his own promise. My devotee's promise is more important than my promise. Swani Gama Mapahaya Mat Pratikam attempted to compromise his own walk by picking up a charity. 
Mm. From another perspective, Krishna did not break his vow also. <laughs> because chariot wheel is not considered. <laughs> 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 and a warrior is going to uh, the batting field, will he pick up some chariot wheels? <laughs> and the four wheels are there under the chariot. It's not one of the weapons. In that sense, Krishna did not break his vow. <laughs> Chakrapani became Rathangapani. Rathangapani became a beautiful shloka. The first canto, Rathangapani. Yomaya Santataya Anubhutya Bhita Prapada Sarodha Gandham. How did it begin? First canto, third chapter. This. Yo Amaya, without any reservations, Santataya, always, constantly, without any interruptions, Anuvritya, favorably, when you render service, such a person can understand Krishna's glories. Saveda Dhatu Padavi Imparasyam, Saveda Dhatu Padavi Imparasyam, Duranta Virya Saratanya Pane, Duranta Virya Saratanya Pane, Yomaya will bless uh, a devotee and give understanding of his own tattva and his heart to other devotees to the degree a devotees perform unmotivated service, uninterrupted service without any reservations. This reminds this me of something else also. <laughs> the Lord reveals his heart to people, to his devotees. It's not easy to understand the Lord's heart. Just now we have seen uh, about Gambhirya. Even great Kavis cannot understand Krishna's heart. But Krishna, when he appeared as Dev, he allowed Sukracharya to understand his heart. Sukracharya exactly knew the identity of Dev and plan of Amadeva. Oh. <laughs> and he revealed that plan to Bari Maharaj. This boy is not just a simple Brahmana boy. <laughs> this boy is Lord Vishnu himself and his plan <laughs> is to take charity from you and in the name of taking three steps from you, he will occupy all the three planetary systems with two steps only. You will not be able to fulfill your promise also. <laughs> and uh, and he will take away all the kingdom and give to Indra. Whatever plan is there within the Lord's mind, Sukracharya completely understood it. But he could not understand Bhari Maharaj's heart. <laughs> <laughs> Devotee's plans are inconceivable to Sukracharya and Lord's plans are fully conceivable. <laughs> and what did Sukracharya say? He said that you won't be able to fulfill your promise, you won't be able to offer third step. Means he could not understand what Bhari Maharaj would do when Vamadev asked him for the third step. Yeah. Bhari Maharaj would offer his head, put your, put your third foot on me. And that was not uh, known to Sukracharya. But whatever Vamadev planned, he completely knew. You know why? The Lord revealed his heart to Sukracharya. Sukracharya, please understand my full plans. And just before I arrive only, I send an SMS, what's up, message? <laughs> Check your message. This is what I am going to do. <laughs> and you stop your disciple. Then your disciple will visit you. That he did not understand. <laughs> <laughs> did not understand that. <laughs> so Sukracharya only understood the last time and revealed that plan to Bali And after that, how Bali will respond, Sukracharya has no idea. But then Bali responded. How he rejected his guru. My Guru is instructing me to take back my promise. My Guru is asking me to not surrender to Vishnu. What kind of Guru is he? I reject him. <laughs> Sukracharya did not understand Bali Maharaj's <laughs> intentions. He could never expect that. Uh, he could expect 
that a small Brahmana boy can take away all the property of Bali Maharaj, but he could never expect that his own disciple will, will uh, you know, disobey. Why did the Lord arrange this to happen? Because when Sukracharya stops Bali Maharaj, and when Bali Maharaj rejects Sukracharya and then offers everything to uh, Krishna, Vamanadev, and does Atma Vedana, then Bali Maharaj's glory will be highlighted. If nobody stops him, and Bali Maharaj innocently offers, <laughs> offers the, the three steps of land, and he's bankrupt, he will tell you he's secret. But Bali Maharaj knew what Vamanadev is going to do. Because Sukracharya told him. Despite knowing the last things he offered, that is Atma Vedana. Mm. We were discussing, right? <laughs> uh, the Lord will, uh, we have a list of difficulties that we want to face, <laughs> but the Lord has a different list. <laughs> now, we choose to suffer in a particular way. Uh, in this kind of austerity we give me, I will experience. That austerity I cannot handle. <laughs> this inconvenience, this reversal I can handle, but that reversal I cannot handle. We have our list. But the Lord says, <laughs> I will not follow your list. I will <laughs> trouble you in my own way. I will purify you in my own way. <laughs> and the way I purify you may not be palatable to you. Accept it. The Lord may say like that. But despite knowing the Lord's way of purifying Bali Maharaj, still Bali Maharaj surrendered. That highlighted his glory so much. Again, go back to his first quality that we discussed. Bhakta nam manavartanam prabhavya sarva sakhava. The Lord likes to highlight the glories of his devotees. That is one of his qualities. One of the foremost qualities of the Lord is he wants to see his devotees more glorified than himself also. He gives them opportunities to surrender and he reveals how surrendered they are to everybody. Uttara, she came running to Krishna. Pahiva, Hiva, Hai, Yogin, Deva, Deva, Jagat, Pate, Na Anyam, Pada, Bhayam, Prashya, Yatra, Bhakti, Hupar, Asparam. She said that. She said that Krishna, you are the only person who can protect. Now, Ashwatthamas, Brahmasra is coming towards me, a fiery arrow is coming towards me. Let it kill me, no problem. It should not kill my chain within the womb. That is my best law. She can sacrifice her life, not her children. But if you see the context, just a few days back, Uttara lost her husband. Did Krishna protect him? Krishna did not protect my husband. Will he protect my son now? Why should I go to him? I will not go to him. Kratujjiti, when she lost her son, she blamed the Lord. She criticizes Krishna. You are like an inexperienced child. You are going against your creative laws. How can a child die within the lifetime of his father? She blamed him. Uttara is not like that. She lost her husband. If Krishna had not protected Parikshit Maharaj, will Uttara give up her devotion to Parikshit? No. No. You see, this is the nature of a devotee. In happiness or in distress, in success or in failure, in victory or defeat, in a materially present situation or unpleasant situation, devotees are always surrendered to Krishna and their quality of tolerance, humility, gratitude and surrender are very dear to Krishna and Krishna wanted to create situations to highlight their personal qualities. That is the quality of Krishna. To highlight the Vaishnava qualities of Vaishnavas is the quality of Krishna. One of the foremost qualities of Krishna allowed Bhishma to take the side of Adharma, fight on behalf of Duryodhana. And Bhima fought obediently. Everybody misunderstood uh, Bhishma, sorry. Everybody misunderstood Bhishma. Till now people ask questions. Why did Bhishma not uh, stop Draupadi Vastrahara? Why did Bhishma fight on behalf of Duryodhana? What's happening? So many people question, Bhishma allowed himself to be misunderstood for all generations to come to become an instrument in Krishna's way. Yeah. Krishna wanted to give this important message to all of us. However powerful, influential and popular experience you may be, if you take the side of Adharma, you will fall down, you will be defeated. Krishna wanted to give this message to everybody and Krishna used Bhishma, who is the most celebrated warrior of his times. 
and Krishna allowed Bhishma to be defeated by an inferior warrior, less experienced warrior like Arjuna. You see? And Bhishma did it. And to highlight how great Bhishma is, Krishna created another situation. What is that? After Kunti Mata offered her prayers, Yudhishthira Maharaj came to Krishna, crying, because of me, just to enthrone me as the king of Hastinapur, hundreds and thousands and thousands of soldiers have sacrificed in their lives and the cause of their death. Yudhishthira Maharaj was feeling so overwhelmed, so sad, so guilty. Krishna tried to pacify him. Yudhishthira was not, Maharaj is not getting pacified. Yasadeva tried to pacify him. He is not getting pacified. Dhamya tried. Yudhishthira is not getting pacified. Many people try to go, give good counsel. Yudhishthira Maharaj is not pacified. In that context, Sutta Goswami described Krishna as Adbhuta Karmana, mm -hmm. one who does wonderful deeds. What is the wonderful deed Arjun, uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj did? Uh, Krishna did. Krishna allowed Yudhishthira Maharaj to get confused and Krishna counseled him. And again he made Yudhishthira Maharaj not to get convinced by his counsel. <laughs> <laughs> right? Externally, as Bhagavan, he is giving him good counseling. Consoling him. Internally, as Paramatma is talking, go, listen to me. <laughs> Only Krishna can do <laughs> Krishna sitting inside, he just took his hat, he says, don't listen to Krishna's words. No. <laughs> you have to listen to Bhishma's words. Then Krishna took all the Pandavas in front of Bhishma. So much service Krishna extracted from Bhishma. Whole life. And he was pierced by Arjuna's arrows. Every inch of his body was pierced by Arjuna's arrows and he was lying on the deathbed. None of his bodies, body and limbs are moving except one part, tongue. Even in these circumstances, Krishna is expecting some service from Vishnu. What is that service? Give one class. And <laughs> Raja Dharma, Dhyana Dharma, Sri Dharma, Varnashrava Dharma and ultimately Dhyavata Dharma. Give one class. It's, it's not that easy to give a class lying on a bed of arrows <laughs> on the battlefield. Only time is going, nothing else is going. <coughs> Why did Krishna expect that service from <coughs> Before dying, you should do the service and, and die. Why did Krishna expect this? Just to glorify Krishna. Whole life you have been misunderstood by many people. You have been mistreated with Duryodhana Krishna. And against, against your desire, uh, you had to submit to the expectations of Duryodhana, Dhritarashtra. It was very painful for Bhishma. At least when Vidura was against Duryodhana, Duryodhana said, get us from here, I banish you. But Duryodhana never said that to Bhishma, mm -hmm. because he knows. Bhishma is loyal to the throne of Hastinapur. Mm -hmm. Bhishma's presence is very important for him victory of the Pandavas. Mm -hmm. He wanted his hands. So malicious people are the real kind of people. He wanted only the experience of Vishnu and hands of Vishnu and not the heart of Vishnu. In this way, the Lord can create situations where a pure devotee is also manipulated by an unscrupulous person. And if that is the service that is given to him, devotee will accept that service. Vishnu did it. And finally, when Vishnu was there, uh, laying on the deathbed, Pandavas came in front. Vishma said so many things. Aho Krishna, Aho Manya, you do him Dharmananda. He said many beautiful things. And in the presence of Krishna, in the presence of Vyasa, in the presence of Dhaumya, in the presence of Vishwamitra, Jamadagni, Sukadeva Goswami, um, and many such Brahmashis, Rajashis, Devashis, and universal celebrities, to counsel Yudhishthira Maharaj is not a small thing. Yudhishthira Maharaj is not an ordinary person, he is Dharmaraj. He is the personification of Dharma. When he is confused, to counsel him is not a small thing. Back to when so many people are sitting in front. So there goes Swami sitting. Um, Parashuram is sitting, he is on spiritual master. Right? And uh, Javadhyam is sitting. Vishnamitra is sitting. Krishna is personally standing there. Standing, not even sitting. So many people are standing 
and Bhishma was able to gain trust. How knowledgeable he is, how experienced he is, how much presence of mind he had. Krishna wanted to reveal his glories to the whole world just before his death. This is the quality of Krishna. Krishna will never let his devotee down. So if some people misunderstand the devotees, that's their problem. <laughs> but Krishna gave enough clues and very self-evident circumstances he created to highlight the glory of Krishna. Krishna sacrificed his own promise to honor Krishna's promise. Prema Vashya, what yet quality? I think we will do it later. So many are there. We will directly go to conclusion. Conclusion. What is conclusion of our class generally? Radha. We have seen seven versions of Krishna, right? Radha is no less. The qualities are also like seven versions. Vaidadya Sindhu Ranura Agara Saika Sindhu Vaidadya Sindhu Ranura Agara Saika Sindhu Vatsalya Sindhu Rati Sandra Krupaika Sindhu Vatsalya Sindhu Rati Sandra Krupaika Sindhu Lavanya Sindhu Ramrita Chari Rupa Sindhu Lavanya Sindhu Ramrita Chari Rupa Sindhu Sri Radhika Asparatu Mehrdi Kiemi Sindhu Sri Radhika Radharani is an ocean of virtues. Anuraga Rasaika Sindhu. She has this deep affection, attraction towards Krishna. Anuraga Rasa. She is an ocean, condensed ocean of unlimited attraction towards Krishna. That is second ocean. Hey! Vatsalya Sindhu. Krishna is also Vatsalya Jalavi. She is also Vatsalya Sindhu. Sindhu Jalavi is also an ocean. She is an ocean of compassion. Affection, motherly affection towards all the children. Whatever devotion we have towards Krishna is coming from Radha. Fourth, Ati Sandra Kripaika Sindhu Kripa. He is compassion. Sandra Kripa means condensed compassion. Condensed ocean of compassion. Ati Sandra Kripa means extremely condensed ocean of compassion. Extra. 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 More than Krishna. Lavanya Sindhu. An ocean of loveliness. Amrita Charirupa Sindhu, an ocean of beauty. Jagan Mano Mohana Chitta Mohi, ocean of beauty. Then Sri Radhika Astra Tumi Hirdi Keli Sindhu, he is also Keli Sindhu, an ocean of Leela's pastimes. And tomorrow, we will have this question with Krishna's Leela. Leela! This is Radharani's seven oceans, that is Krishna's seven oceans. So with this, I will conclude my humble description of Krishna's Gunas. 10 o'clock? Is it 10? Yes, 10. Yeah. Uh, every day I'm increasing half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> also, I promise that I'll make some questions. Tomorrow is Saturday night. Tomorrow, yeah, Saturday night probably. You can go to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I have many devotees that are traveling from distant places also. I'm very sorry for taking your time for granted and then extending the classes. But I'm encouraged by devotees to <laughs> extend. For my own purification, you should learn the Krishna more for your purification in that way. And this point here is there. And I sincerely pray forgiveness from all of you. If I said anything inappropriate or inaccurate, then you forgive me. I'm really saying this. And please bless me so that I don't just speak the qualities of Krishna, but actually develop attraction towards Krishna and become Nityam Vishnu Janakriya. Right? All I want is loving affection from devotees and mercy of devotees. Without their blessings and affection, we can't survive in Bharti. So, genuine attraction towards Krishna, attraction towards Bhagavatam, and blessings of the masses. This is our life. Apart from this, we don't need anything else, and we can't ask for anything else. Just need this from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.